right? Wait. How's this work? I pressed the stop button. I'm professional. All right, I'm Josh Holtz. Uh, how's everybody doing? Are we good? All right, cool. So uh, I am, well, known for handing out cat plushies over at the booth for the past two days. Uh, that is my main job, is the plushie expert. Uh, I am also pretty uh, well known for my work on Fastlane. Uh, started as a core contributor in 2015 and took over lead maintainer in 2018. Uh, as Adam mentioned, I uh, do everything pizza, so I'm a founder of Deep Dish Swift. Uh, which is the Chicago Swift conference happening in 2025, but that's not why I'm here. I am here to talk about something more important, and I have a fear of talking, which does not really mesh well with me being on stage right now. Uh, but also, I had a fear of talking, and still have, and had, and have, and had. It is a very confusing state of, uh, of what, my, what my fear is. Uh, it is lots of question marks. Um, it's a pretty complex thing, but that's, that's, that's why I'm here to, uh, to talk today. So I'm talking about refactoring fear. Uh, this is uh, a thing that I've been going through since I was six, which is what I'm gonna get onto. So uh, phase one is uh, obtain a fear. So uh, I, I have one, and as I mentioned, it is talking. Uh, you, some of you might have the same, might have your own, so try and like, follow along uh, with your fear. So I got one. Uh, but how, why do I have this fear? Um, for that, we have to travel back. Time hop to 1996. Uh, that's me. Which is creepy because my son also looks like that. So I actually can't, I can't stand looking at this picture. But uh, backwards hat, building stuff, it is, it is very much me. Um, so six years old, I was in elementary school at the time, probably like most of us, uh, living the life, building Legos, playing outside, enjoying everything. Everything was normal, uh, to me at least. Uh, I got pulled out of class in school, not because I was misbehaving, I am a perfect angel, uh, and, uh, but I got told that I have a stutter. And as a six-year-old, I never heard that word in my entire life. Uh, so it was, it was a very weird, weird thing to hear. Um, but I felt, I felt confused, because I, I, I didn't really know what it was, and I explained that I didn't talk the way the other kids talked, uh, didn't talk the way that adults expected me to talk. Um, so I didn't know I was any different. I didn't really understand. I was six. Um, so it made me feel confused, uh, broken in a way. Uh, and also just kind of, just, it, 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 didn't feel, it, didn't, it just didn't feel right. Um, I, I couldn't comprehend it at the time. Uh, and it took me, math, uh, 20 plus years to actually understand it. Uh, so I went through speech therapy in school with a few other uh, kids that had similar uh, speech issues. Um, we worked through exercises about talking, breathing, um, trying to make sure that we could uh, talk fluently. And it worked well for everybody else in my class, uh, except, except for me. Everybody else, uh, all the therapy sessions w worked good, they were more fluent, and I was actually getting worse. Um, so it was a very negative process for me, and I really, again, didn't, didn't understand it. Um, but for speech impediments like mine, there's two different kinds. There's a uh, neuro, well, word, neurological, which is very like a physical problem with, with uh, stuttering. And there's also a uh, psychological one too. And I think everybody else in my class had the more uh, physical one where uh, um, the breathing controlling really helped their fluency. Uh, but it did not help mine. Um, and again, at the time, I didn't know that. I don't know if my speech therapist knew that, uh, but it, it just didn't do it for me. So uh, I found coping mechanisms. Uh, I tried to avoid talking, uh, public talking, uh, in classrooms trying to like read books and stuff. Like I would find my way out of those every time I can. Uh, if I had to give a presentation, I would uh, very cringely use speech to text. 
uh, which did not, it was not great in the early 2000s. Um, now it might actually be okay, but it was, uh, it was, it was not, not a place where I succeeded in any sort of, of talking. And school, school was the hardest because kids are mean, um, but it was also hard outside of, uh, of school as well. Uh, making phone calls, ordering food at restaurants, uh, anything that involved talking was like an insane amount of work. Um, and that, 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 that went through until I was, well, uh, spoiler, until like 25-ish. So about 20 years of going through all that struggling. And, uh, but I found computers uh, when I was, well, I've been doing computers since I was like five. But I found programming specifically uh, when I was like 13 or 14. And uh, I like to say that programming found me because it was, uh, it was a communication tool that I understood. Like I didn't struggle typing it, didn't struggle thinking it. Uh, like it was, it was there, it was fluent for me. It was like my, my language that was uh, built into me. So that was my path. Uh, I buried myself deep in programming. Started off with Visual Basic 5, uh, HTML, CS, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. I had my own server that I got as a Christmas present, which was probably one of the best presents I ever got. Uh, managing my own server at 16 was a lot of fun. Um, so I just buried myself in that because that is what, what I found fun and that was just easy for me. Uh, but the hard part was that was a very like lonely kind of thing too. I was in my room just computering all the time. So I wanted to find uh, community. And this was later on in life, like I was like 18, 19, 20. Uh, at the time, I'm gonna date myself here, uh, IRC, uh, not probably used a lot these days, but that was our like social, s social groups uh, where nerds hung out. Uh, I got into a bunch of open source, uh, Fastlane specifically, and that's the one where I really found this community that I could, uh, communicate with, and that was a lot of communicating on uh, like virtual uh, tools, which was great again because I didn't have to like say words out loud. Uh, so like that, that was nice. I could meet people from around the world, help people, um, and uh, still like have this sort of friendship. But uh, uh, there was still something missing, and it was this like, uh, this physical sense of having like a group, a community, a lot like this. And I walled myself off a lot. I masked my stutter. Um, I didn't have a lot of people that knew about it, um, but also I wasn't really sharing a lot or saying everything that I wanted to share. Uh, and I was, I was tired. It was exhausting always having to deal with that, think about that, um, and I just wanted to let it go. And it was just like my, uh, my routine of hiding it ever since I was like six. So phase two, I decided I was tired and I wanted to be done with it. So uh, I had this, in, this like inspiration and introspection phase where like I wanted to go do something that, uh, that helped me grow from my stutter, but I also had to like look internally a lot in order to figure out what, uh, what was causing that and how I get to that point. Uh, so I wanted to grow, but I needed a purpose to grow. Um, I didn't want to go in a direction because that, that doesn't excite me. I needed a problem to solve. And my thing was I wanted to share my knowledge. Uh, I've been, I was doing testing at the time for five, six years. There's a, a lot of information I had about like build tools, CI, CD, um, uh, app deployment, shipping, all this I wanted to share. And like share, like making the tool was fun enough, but it's, it's really fun to talk about it. So I wanted to public speak. Uh, that was my goal. But I also wanted redemption on a lot of failures that I had with speaking in school. Uh, gave a lot of speeches, or tried to give a lot of speeches. Not, not very successful. Um, and I want to know why those weren't successful, because that was going to help me grow into a successful speaker. Uh, and it turned out that I viewed my stutter as this like demon that was holding me back, um, this like creature that that was just stopping me from doing everything I wanted to do. But 
was it really holding me back? And the answer to that is no. It was, it was really me that was holding me back. And like that was, a, that was a thing to learn. Like I was my own enemy in a way. Um, and I started, the, the way that it, it worked that I figured out was like I was portraying my fear onto everybody who was around me. I thought they like knew it, they could see I was a stutterer and just like judge me all the time. And that's just the thing that like played over and over and over in my head. So I just kind of grew to like assume that that was true. Uh, and it obviously is not. Um, so I need to be open with my stutter to myself and to everybody around me. So in 2014, I wrote a blog post uh, about, about my stutter, being very open about uh, me having it, how it affected me, and how it kind of changed me to be who I am. And I posted that on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, in, uh, the subreddit for stutterers, and like it got a lot of good things about it. But the thing that surprised me the most is a lot of like my family and friends had no idea, had absolutely no idea that I had a stutter, which to me was great. I mean, like I did my job at masking, but also uh, that means like I was causing all this stress on myself that 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 was not needed for for years. Um, so instead of like having this demon of the stutter holding me back, uh, I needed to like hold hands with it and run with it. Uh, and honestly, this is a very like creepy, happy picture, but that, that, is, that is how it felt. Um, and like, I felt lucky to have my stutter. It, it really made me who, who I was. Uh, I found computers and programming and excelled at that, because uh, my stutter kind of like held me back a little bit in that way, but it made me really understand and push forward in that field. Uh, it took me a long, long time to uh, actually understand it, uh, but like it, it made me me. Um, so I needed to work with my stutter, and therapy didn't work. Um, it, it it made things worse for me. I had like it it, it just wasn't the, the the right solution. So as per usual, me I engineered my own solution, uh, and that's where we have fun with this one. This was going to be a non-technical talk. Uh, but uh, what, what is, what's the SWIFT conference without having some SWIFT in the final uh, slides? So uh, we're writing SWIFT uh, about me. Uh, so we're starting with struct Josh, and uh, just some properties. I love pizza. I really love pizza, and my hat position is backwards. It's been that way. It is fixed. It's not changing. Uh, and then the auto-generated code for me is when I speak, my mouth says words. That's how I think most people work. Um, that's how animals work, I think. I don't read minds, but it seems like there's a connection there. Uh, but that is not how I work. My, when I think words, words don't come out the way that I think they, they should. So uh, I have a preprocessor in my mind that applies a speech impediment Probably one of the worst things that you should throw in your code, don't do it. Uh, and it, uh, we'll see why. Um, so this uh, apply speech impediment function has uh, stuttering odds. It's hard coded for the simplicity of this talk. Uh, but we split the sentence into words by space. There might be a more efficient way of doing this. My linting might be wrong. We're going to ignore that. Uh, so map over the words. And there's a random chance that, that this word might struggle for me. Uh, if it falls within the range, uh, I'm going to stutter. Otherwise, I'm going to be fluent. And then uh, that returns a string, but we're going to map this all back together. So we're going to go back into my speech impediment, speech impediment enum here. They can make these words easier on me. Uh, we have two cases. We have fluent and we have stutter. So fluent is essentially a no-op. Like the word goes in, word comes out, great, that's the goal. Uh, but the one that is there is the stutter. So in my case here, if a word is like less than three characters long, I'm probably not gonna stutter on it. Uh, if it's longer, I'm gonna do it. So here in this example, we take the first two characters twice and add it to the word. Uh, so if I'm saying Swift leads is the best, 
There's a good chance it's going to come out. I don't even know how to stutter on purpose. So Swift leads is the best, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I've never actually stuttered on purpose, but that's, that's how it would most likely come out. The problem is here, I don't just have a stutter. I have what's called a block. And well, you know, I have a stutter too. But the block is the block is the one that I really struggle with. So we're going to hide those because the screen is uh, too small, and we're going to add the block. So with the block, I uh, I randomly pause in my main thread. <laughs> so again, this is not a good preprocessor at all. Uh, I have one to ten seconds. There are times where it's actually infinite, and I have to like force close myself. Uh, it's not great, but then after that, I still have a little stutter afterwards. But the block is the thing that's scary, because like, it, it really stops me from communicating. So we're going back to our apply speech impediment function, and uh, we're going to add block odds. And the block odds are a little bit less, um, but they are higher in priority. If the block odds hit, those happen first, and then the stutter happens. So Swift leads is the best becomes Swift leads with a huge pause is the best. And like for people watching me talk, like they might be confused why I'm not saying it. Internally, I'm actually shaking trying to get these words out. Uh, and then ad that animation took me a half hour to do in Keynote. So that is probably the best part of this entire slide. Uh, so this is how I understood how my stutter worked when I let it control me. I had no control over the stutter, no control over the block. It just happened, which is why I masked myself to like try and not talk. But I decided to look within myself and figure out how can I actually refactor this function, refactor my fear, the title. And it turns out my block odds uh, of 0.1 were actually high, and I have a, a base block. The base block is very small, 0.01. These are all made up numbers, by the way. There's no scientific research behind this at all. <laughs> um, but the way that the block, block works is uh, I'm going to adjust it for some of the environment that's around me. So we're going to go jump into this new function. This is nothing in here yet. So we're going to add stuff. This is, this is where I spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how to prevent my block, like what factors affect it. So uh, casual conversation. My friend's family had no idea I had a stutter. So if I'm just having casual conversation, nothing stressful, we're just hanging out talking about stupid stuff, my block has a very, very small chance of happening. However, if I fail on words, I have this failure database in my head. And uh, if I know those words are coming, there's a higher chance I'm going to fail. So then my block odds increase. Uh, if I have a word that doesn't have any synonyms with it, uh, my name, I have a very hard time saying my name. If I'm ordering food, I want something specific. Uh, that is a very hard thing to say. Um, things, things like that. Uh, that like that have no no replacement, no backup plan for me. Uh, that increases my odds. Uh, loud environment for some reason. I think it's because if somebody hears, if somebody, if I say something to somebody and they can't hear me, I have to repeat it again. So that's that's a very stressful thing. But if I'm confident in what I'm talking about, that'll decrease it a lot. So a lot of my talks that I give are things that I have been doing for years. I don't have to think about them. I don't have to study about them. All that stuff is here. I can make up words on the fly. Uh, and then just being honest about my stutter. Like, that is the thing that has helped the most. Um, if you've seen any other of my other conference talks, I, uh, I start in the third slide by saying I have a stutter. And the reason I do that is because that lowers my stress. There's no surprise on the people if I stutter. Um, and it, it just makes for an overall better experience for everyone. So a lot of this took me 20 years to get to. But like being honest about my stutter is the thing that has really helped me the most. Uh, so here, these are the, the three things that make it worse. Well, the three things that I could fit on the slide that make it worse. And then here are right, math three and three. Yes, here are the three things that make my stutter or block uh, uh, happen less often. So we have Swift leads is the best. Uh, it turns out that function was uh, not just a string. Uh, it had a bunch of these default values. And this is how that I thought about it. Like, I thought about it always as the worst case. So casual conversation, false. Frequent 
uh, well, those are just dictionaries that are huge. Uh, loud environment, true, confident, false, and honestly, uh, honest about my stutter, false. So that is like how these default values were, were hidden from me for a long time. Um, I think I changed it. Oh no, example now. So again, this is, this is the blocking, this is the default behavior. It's not, not great. Uh, we can change them to what they are supposed to be uh, or what I want them to be. So casual conversation, true, loud environment, false, confident, true, and honest, true. So this is pretty accurate to this talk today. Uh, I try and make a lot of my talks on stage in a very uh, casual, um, like chit chat kind of way because it makes it easier on me. Uh, it's very quiet in here, which is nice. Uh, and then confident, I've been doing this since I was six, stuttering and talking about it and thinking about it. And then I'm pretty honest about my stutter. That's what this whole talk is about. Uh, so Swift leads is the best. Easy, fluent, boom. Um, and it, like this, this function could just go on for forever. So there could be a, a, you could add an async closure here where I have to search for replacement words if I get stuck with something so that can freeze me up for a bit. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that can happen there. Uh, so again, this was me six years ago. Not six, well, not, not six years, that'd be impressive actually. <laughs> Woo, uh, I grow as fast as Antoine. Um, but no, this was me at, 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 at six years old uh, and if you looked at, if you talked to me when I was six, or talked to me when I was 10, or even 25, like you would, I would not believe you that in the past year I spoke at, at uh, TriSwift Tokyo, uh, Swiftable, uh, do iOS, and then that was Swift leads in 21. Like that is, like that is, just, it still does not make sense to me. So we are all our own instance, and with just differing implementations. And it, take the time to understand your implementations, refactor for your happiness, and become the best of you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>